Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. I promised you a list of more affordable summer fragrance options and today I am here to deliver. And what I love most about this group of fragrances is that even though they are less expensive than my previous list, you're not sacrificing the quality. They are still incredible. I love all of the perfumes I talked about during my luxury edition, but I am certainly planning to get a ton of use out of these fragrances as well this summer. I have to begin with the most delicious layering combination from Sol de Janeiro. This is the new Beja Flor Elasti Cream, and this is the Brazilian Crush Chirosa 68, both in the pink bottles. Individually, these products are both amazing, but together, this is a match made in heaven. The fragrance smells delicious, it's a really nice scent, but it is incredibly long lasting when you put them together. I applied this cream earlier this morning and I swear it is all I can smell right now. It is so intense. I believe the cream is $48 and this bottle right here is 20 bucks. They also have a larger size. I think this is a three, yes. Okay, so this is a three fluid ounce bottle for $20. Online only, I've never seen it in store. There's an eight ounce bottle for $35, you get eight ounces. And you might be thinking, well, sure, but it's just a body mist. When you layer them together, I swear the projection could rival your best performing luxury niche fragrance. It is so impressive. The texture of the cream is really nice as well. It feels very hydrating without being too heavy or too greasy. It has KK oil, plant squalene, and a plant-based collagen but then it also has that fresh fruity floral fragrance with keynotes of Brazilian jasmine and pink dragon fruit. A lot of people have said it reminds them of Burberry Her, the Ariana Grande Cloud fragrance as well. And then the Brazilian Crush Chirosa 68 is the perfect layering mist. It has keynotes of pink dragon fruit, leashy essence, Brazilian jasmine, ocean air notes, hibiscus, sheer vanilla, and sun musk. This is a brand new bottle. I just opened this today. I couldn't find my used bottle. I think it might be in the bathroom somewhere. I temporarily misplaced it, but it's a good thing I had another one on backup. This was sent to me complimentary. This cream I purchased during the Sephora Spring Savings event. I think that's around the time it first launched. And I got the smaller size, which I've been using for travel. I love it so much. I went back and I purchased the larger size because currently this is my favorite of the Sol de Janeiro body products. And I love them all, but I think maybe because it's new, I don't know. I just love this combination. If you're looking for something that's budget friendly, smells really delicious, feminine, fresh, perfect for summer, you really cannot go wrong with these two. And then I also mentioned this in my last video because it doesn't matter if your fragrance is on the budget friendly side or more expensive, of course we all want our fragrance to last all day long. And a great way to do that is to make sure your skin is hydrated so it's not absorbing all of the essential oils that will give you the fragrance. Any of your favorite summer fragrances that have similar notes to this cream will be a beautiful combination and it will help the longevity of the fragrance. So I also like the combination of the Beja Flora Lasty Cream with the original, the Brazilian Crush Troza 62. This is more of a warm vanilla, more gourmand fragrance versus fresh floral. The keynotes in this are pistachio, almond, heliotrope, jasmine petals, vanilla, salted caramel, and sandalwood. This has a nice creamy, dreamy, very smooth finish. So if you were to layer this on top, it would be very edible and delicious as well. So I've been lying to myself about disliking citrusy fragrances, and this is the perfume that solidified that realization for me. This is from La Vanilla. It's vanilla grapefruit. There are several other vanilla fragrances in the line. There's one that's currently sold out. I think it's called Vanilla Summer or Vanilla Vacation, and I want to try that fragrance so bad, so I'm gonna have to set a notification. Hopefully it will come back in stock, but if you love citrusy, vanilla, tropical fragrances, you will probably really love this. This bottle is $48, so less than 50 bucks, and it's a clean fragrance as well. Keynotes include juicy pink grapefruit, fresh lime, goji berry, grapefruit peel oil, warm cedar wood, and soft vanilla. I have not sprayed on a fragrance of the day. The only thing I'm wearing currently is the Beja Flor Elasti Cream, which does smell pretty intense, but I do want to layer something on top. So I'm just going to layer this fragrance. I know it might not be smart since I have a few other fragrances to smell, but this is going to be my fragrance of the day. 
it's more of a vanilla forward fragrance with just a hint of the juicy pink grapefruit. I love this. I think it is such a beautiful everyday summer fragrance. It's more casual. You know, I wouldn't say this is going to replace your Moon Glory from The Harmonist or Roja 51. It's not quite on the same level, but if you're looking for something that you can just spritz with abandon, get out the door, run your errands, go to brunch, meet the girls, do whatever you have to do during the day, you truly do not have to spend a fortune to smell incredible. I love this fragrance. I also really like the Pure Vanilla. I have a little roller ball of the Pure Vanilla. It's gorgeous as well. They also have a Vanilla Coconut, which I am going to have to add to my list. The longevity is a few hours. You know, it dries down and it becomes a little bit lighter, but I think layered on top of a really great moisturizer, you're going to smell this fragrance throughout the day. It's not going to disappear on you. Mmm, and it's just a sweet kind of musky vanilla. So great for vanilla lovers who don't want to break the bank. I have a sprinkling of other travel sprays here to talk about, so I'm going to go through those next. First, I have Toca Julieta. I have been waiting to talk about this fragrance, and there is no real rhyme or reason as to why I picked up a travel size. I guess maybe I was thinking I should kind of slow it down with my fragrance purchases, but Julieta is absolutely full bottle worthy, and if I ever reach the point where I go through this size, I will invest in the full-size bottle. It is a gorgeous fragrance. In fact, the day I finally purchased this, and I had been thinking about it for a while, I always knew it was on the list, but then I went for it. I happened to be trying a couple of the new fragrances at Sephora, and I also had visited Neiman Marcus, and I was trying some of the Louis Vuitton fragrances, because at some point I would like to add one of those to my collection. I currently don't have any. And I came home, and I was showing my husband different spots on my arm where I'd sprayed the fragrances, and between the Louis Vuitton and the other new fragrances at Sephora, Julieta was his favorite. I honestly think it was my favorite as well. It is such a beautiful summer fragrance. It is incredibly feminine and it just sort of feels like a fairy tale. When I smell this fragrance, I don't know, maybe it's the bottle, maybe it's the name, but I just picture like uh, Italian countryside somewhere, like picking oranges for the day, spending the afternoon walking through cobblestone streets, a very romantic image comes to mind whenever I smell this. It's described as a romantic indulgence, sure to inspire great art and passion, a fresh floral fragrance that beckons your inner muse. It's a tribute to youthful feminine charm. It's an enchanting blend of delicate pink tulips, fresh green apples, and sweet vanilla accord. I believe the full-size bottles are $76. This was maybe around $30. Oh, it's so pretty. It's a little bit clean, like a really delicious smelling soap, like fresh linens. It's light, airy. Charming is the best way to describe this fragrance. I love the apple. I think it, it gives it kind of a unique factor. It's not just like a typical fresh floral fragrance. I think this is signature scent worthy. It is so great. Next, I have Sun Saint by Penrose. This is a little travel spray of the Eau de Parfum I have this much left. It's about halfway done. I purchased this from Sephora a couple years ago now, and this has been one of my favorite summer fragrances for a really long time, but I got a bit sad and I stopped talking about it because it disappeared from the Sephora website, and I honestly thought maybe they went out of business because of COVID or something like that, but it turns out they just went through a rebranding, and I was scrolling through their website just yesterday, so I know that this is still available, and I believe the full-size bottle retails for $90, so it is more expensive than the fragrances we've talked about so far, but it is well worth it. I think Sun Saint rivals Le Labo another 13. It kind of has that very smooth, beachy feel. Beachy, but not overly sweet, pina colada, tropical in your face. It is a very elegant smelling fragrance, and for the price, I think this beats out a lot of the luxury competitors. It's described as breezy, sparkling, chill, effortlessly cool and relaxed. Sun Saint forgoes the umbrella drink sugar rush for a tangy spray of lime and warm coconut wood, layered over skin salty from a day at the beach. Keynotes include lime, eucalyptus, mandarin, yuzu, sea salt, cashmere musk, violet, coconut wood, and sandalwood. It smells so relaxing. You smell this fragrance and it just 
calms your nerves. This would also be a great bedtime perfume. I'm just so happy they did not discontinue Sun Saint. I also, I love it so much. I also picked up a gold shimmering body oil and I haven't really been using them because I didn't want to talk about them and share what I was wearing for the day because I thought this was gone. So don't be surprised if you hear me talk about Sun Saint a lot more going forward. It's just beautiful. It is so sophisticated, not overly sweet. If you like coconut, but you don't like a coconut milk, sugary, vanilla type of fragrance, this is very different than that. Now, if you like perfumes that are on the sweeter side, you might really like this Clean Reserve Radiant Nectar. This is such a beautiful fragrance for summer because it's a little citrusy, fruity, sweet, but very energetic. It's a very happy fragrance. Whenever I smell this, I just think of wearing bright colors, maybe floral patterns. It's very happy. Keynotes include amber seed, pear nectar, liquid musk, and a blend of subtle wood notes, which create a radiant warmth like a summer's day. If you love pear, you will absolutely love radiant nectar. This would also be a really great vacation fragrance as well. Floral Street is another great brand to check out if you're looking for more budget-friendly fragrances. I believe the full-size bottles of Floral Street are about $85. This is Wild Vanilla Orchid. I have a couple of them. Arizona Bloom is another really pretty one for summer. I think I talked about that one last year. I believe I included this in my Best Vanillas Fragrance video. If you love vanilla and you love something that's very warm and summery, a little bit tropical vacation smelling, you will absolutely love this. It is a fun, kind of spicy, interesting vanilla. It's not just straightforward vanilla bean or a vanilla cupcake. It has a little zing. There's a little something interesting. Keynotes include creamy vanilla, cassis, citrus, jasmine, bamboo, and sandalwood. When you first spray the fragrance, it's a little bit crisp, almost green. And then it dries down and it just becomes the most beautiful, warm, sensual vanilla. And I'll never forget when I was shopping at Sephora and I picked up this fragrance, I was asking around everybody who was there, all of the sales associate, what their favorite vanilla fragrance was. And almost everybody said this. And they also pointed it out as being one of their top selling vanilla fragrances. So I think this is pretty popular. Next on my list is an oldie goldie. This is DNG number no. three, L'Imperatrice. To this day, one of my favorite fruity floral fragrances. It is so simple. It's not overly complex, but it is very clean, very delicious, kind of mouth-watering, a bit aquatic, but just yummy. It has kiwi, watermelon, floral notes in there. Definitely on the sweeter side, but just incredibly feminine and so beautiful for spring summer if you like something that just smells good this is a crowd pleaser fragrance i would put this in the same category as a chance eau tendre from chanel so if you love that style of fragrance you will almost definitely like this fragrance as well L'Imperatrice is a very versatile fragrance in that I think it is always appropriate. Anytime you get the itch and the mood strikes and you want to wear this is the right occasion. You could wear this daytime, evening. You could dress it up and wear this for a special occasion for a fancy brunch or a day out with the girls, a daytime date even. Or you could just wear this to run to the grocery store. Doesn't matter. It's just soft, light, fresh, pretty, very feminine, and universal. It's just a, a flattering fragrance. I have two new fragrances here from Comptoir Sud Pacifique. Both of these were sent to me complimentary from Twisted Lily. And I had reached out and requested to try these because I've seen this brand for a long time and I have never smelled any of these fragrances, but they all sound delicious. They sound perfect for summer. So I definitely wanted to try a few. This is my favorite, Coco Fig. It's incredible. And then this is Vinny Coco, which is a very straightforward coconut vanilla. Perfect for summertime, not too sweet, very beachy. So I would definitely recommend trying both of these. But if you're looking for something kind of soft coconut and you do like fig, highly recommend the Coco Fig. This is such a pretty fragrance to wear. The only complaint I've heard about these fragrances is that they're not incredibly long lasting. And I will say they dry down to be more of a skin scent. Some people like that. Not everybody wants to knock people's socks off with their fragrance. Some people like something that's, 
you know, closer to the skin. If somebody gets close to you, then yes, they'll be able to pick it up. When I wore Coco Fig the other day, it did get pretty soft, but I just really liked it. I thought it dried down beautifully on the skin and I loved the fragrance that was left lingering. And of course, as we talked about earlier, if you wanted it to be a bit bolder, you could simply layer something underneath. Like I could definitely spritz this on top of maybe the Boom Boom Cream. I'm not sure I would go with the Beja Flora Elasti Cream for this one, just because I think the notes would be more compatible with the Boom Boom because it has that warmth, the vanilla. Key notes in Cocoa Fig include Fig's Heart, Vanilla Flower, Coconut Pulp, Coconut Powder, Fig Leaves, Coconut Milk, and Vanilla from Madagascar. I think the reason I prefer the Coco Fig versus the Vini Coco is that this is a lighter, fresher coconut. It's not quite as woody as the Vini Coco, which is a little bit more of a true vanilla coconut, like straight from the earth. This is a little bit lighter, brighter. I think this would be beautiful for a tropical vacation. It's very summery and it's a, just a happy fragrance. I have three more fragrances here left to talk about, and I think these brands might surprise you, although we are moving to the more expensive side of the affordable list or budget friendly. That word means different things to different people. I remember asking one time on Instagram, I maybe asked a few times, what would you consider to be a good cutoff for a more affordable list? Some people said 100, some people said 200. So. There's quite a range there. We are now over $100, but still not nearly as expensive as my initial luxury edition list. These fragrances are from Florist London, which shocked me even, but when I was looking them up, I noticed that at Selfridges, at least Sheepress, the Eau de Toilette, retails for $86. Now, you would have to pay shipping, but if you have their $55 year membership for worldwide shipping, $86 I think is incredibly reasonable. And then the Cherry Blossom, I believe, is around $119. If you purchase these in the U.S. from other retailers besides Selfridges, they are more expensive, but I think still around $150 this one even less. So not terrible. I wouldn't call them inexpensive. They're certainly not cheap, but they are more reasonable than even the other Florist London fragrances that I've talked about so far. So here I have Cherry Blossom. There's also a Hair Mist, which is even less expensive and still very beautiful, but this is the actual Eau de Parfum. And then this is Sheepress. It's an Eau de Toilette, so it's a little bit lighter, but wow such a beautiful floral fragrance. These are two of the fragrances that I fell in love with when I was on my trip to London. I love Cherry Blossom and I've been on the hunt for a long time. I've talked about it quite a few times for the perfect Cherry Blossom fragrance. I have the Jo Malone, two fragrances now from Guerlain, and I think this one is my favorite because it's kind of the ideal Cherry Blossom. It's everything that I would want in a Cherry Blossom fragrance in that it is straightforward cherry blossom. It's a little bit sweet, but not too sweet, but you really just get that one hero note. I'm sure there are plenty of other notes and other things in the fragrance because it's a niche brand, you know, they wanna make things more complex. But the note I'm looking for, what I truly want to stand out and what I want to smell like is cherry blossom, and I think they nailed it. Keynotes include bergamot, pink peppercorns, cherry blossom, osmanthus, peony, rose, ripe cherries, blossom petals, and sandalwood. I like this cherry blossom fragrance so much. I even prefer it to the limited edition Guerlain cherry blossom I purchased, which it's hard to compare. There's no true comparison to be made because that came with the special bottle, limited edition, handcrafted pieces. It was a limited production, so I would consider that to be more of a work of art, something that I'm going to keep forever, display, but as a fragrance to wear, this cherry blossom is the best in my collection. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Sheepress, the Eau de Toilette. Wow, this blew me away when I was visiting the counter and smelling all of the fragrances. Just kind of going through the motions one by one. Yes, I love this one. No, this isn't for me. Okay, this one's really great. And then I got to Sheepress and I stopped instantly and I just thought I have to spray that on my skin. I need more of this fragrance. It smells divine. And it's just a classic floral. 
but when it's on the skin it almost has like a bubble gum floral type of smell I think it is so pretty I just think of a beautiful bouquet of white flowers it smells fancy Keynotes include bergamot, neroli, lemon, sweet orange, jasmine, ylang-ylang, rose, osmanthus. Base notes are musk, vanilla, patchouli, and amber. I don't really get patchouli or amber, maybe a little bit of amber, but I almost get just honey, like the warmth of honey, but that's it. Nothing too heavy. It's extremely light. If you like a classic floral, something that is insanely feminine. I highly recommend trying this out. And I noticed somebody had mentioned that they were interested in trying a florist discovery set. And I found a few that I would recommend. I don't think this is in any of them, but I believe Cherry Blossom is in one of the discovery sets. So the two I would recommend because I just love the fragrances inside, I will make sure I list down below as well. In case you're curious about florists, I've been talking about them so much since my trip. They are available at Neiman Marcus, I believe, in a couple other department stores, but if you haven't had a chance to try the brand, a discovery set is usually the best way to go. Last but certainly not least, I have Perry from Chanel. This is the latest Lazo collection fragrance, and I think it is perfection in a bottle. Such a beautiful fragrance, and it is so perfect for summertime. I was a little bit surprised to read so many mixed reviews in the comment section of my initial review of this perfume. I didn't really do a comparison, but I guess I did sort of compare them, but I reviewed Paris from Chanel and the new Rose Essence from Dior, which didn't make the list because I believe that's 166, about $170. This fragrance is 140, but you get the larger bottle. It is an eau de toilette, but this is a 4.2 fluid ounce bottle. So I think if you did the math, I think this is not terrible. It reminds me a lot of a lighter version of Coco Noir. It took me a minute to figure out what it smelled similar to because there are a lot of fragrances out at the moment with similar notes. It has lemon, rose, pink pepper, and patchouli. And a lot of those notes are found in Coco Noir, but that would be the very intense like evening, sultry, very sexy version. This is like the light, fresh, daytime version. I think that's maybe why I like it so much or maybe what was a little bit familiar. And the two fragrances are not similar. I'm not saying one could replace the other, but if you were to close your eyes or blindfold yourself and smell Coco Noir and then smell Paris, I think you would see maybe some similarities. Now, I can only imagine there was a bit of pressure put on the perfumer in charge of creating such an iconic fragrance. I mean, of the collection, I would say Paris has got to be like the one. And Paris is the heart of Chanel. Chanel, Paris, they're interchangeable. And this fragrance really does honor the house, honors the brand. It does kind of remind me of strolling through Paris on a summer day, beautiful weather with your croissant in hand. <laughs> I'm just trying to paint the picture for you. If you like rose, if you like something that's a little bit zesty, a little bit citrusy, I think you will really like it. It's a bit spicy, but not too much. I think you can tell that it is meant to be worn daytime, and especially once you get it on the skin and it dries down, it's just really lovely. It's elegant, it's sophisticated, it's everything you would want from a new Chanel fragrance. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I love hearing your recommendations. I received quite a few really good ones on my last video and I haven't had a chance to check them all out yet, but I would love to know if you have any favorite budget-friendly summer fragrances. Drop them in the comment section. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe subscribe and hit the notification bell.